Oh, Morena, look, normally I'd start uh, uh, an occasion like this with a Māori whakatauki, but instead I will uh, start with an English whakatauki uh, said by a Māori. And it is uh, the words of Dame Finna Cooper, take care of our children, take care of what they hear, take care of what they see, take care of what they feel, for how the children grow, so will be the shape of Aotearoa. <clears throat> so thank you for all being here today. This is a very important moment for Oranga Tamariki, but more importantly, for our Tamariki and our Rangatahi. But before I announce the government's response to the Ministerial Advisory uh, Board report, I'd like the Chair of the Advisory Board, um, Matthew Tukaki, to speak about the report and its finding, findings. So, Matt, take it away. Uh, kia ora, thank you very much, Minister. Um, kia ora whānau in the room and, and gathered online. My name is, of course, Matthew Tukaki. Uh, Chairman of the Ministerial Advisory Board of Oranga Tamariki, uh, the Ministry for Children. I'm here to talk about Kahu Aroha, the report that myself and my colleagues, Sir Mark Solomon, uh, Dame Nader Glavish and Shannon Parkuda have been working on and have now handed over to the Minister for Children, the Honourable Calvin Davis. I want to start by saying a few words about you, the people, our whānau, our frontline workers, our Tamariki and also our mokopuna. Thank you for speaking with us and sharing your stories, your mahi, your challenges, your aspirations and hopes, and also to our young people in care who we met throughout this journey, and to those with the lived experience who came forward for a conversation. Thank you. In this report and the recommendations we make, we see an opportunity to draw a line in the sand of a journey that has been many decades in the making. It is an opportunity that should not be lost on us as people, communities, and also as a nation. I also want to acknowledge those who work in the field of care and protection across Aotearoa, from our social workers and frontline staff to community workers, those involved in emergency housing, support services and much more. We know that you go about your mahi every single day facing great challenges in high risk situations at great risk and pressure. Thank you for all the work that you do and also thank you to your whānau for being there to support you in your mahi. Also, a few words about the people that I've had the privilege of working with, my fellow Ministerial Advisory Board members. Sir Mark Solomon, he is as strong in stature as he is in integrity. He never let us take our eye off our true purpose, the reason we all took up this challenge to help our kids, to protect our mokopuna, and to look after our whānau. Dame Nader Glavish. I've heard a story that came from the north, the great land of Taitukuro, about, about Dame Nader that when Ricky Few was introducing Nader and the mayor to a crowd of people, he referred to the mayor as his worship and to Nader as her worship. In my experience, uh, uh, can I just say in my experience, this is absolutely accurate, that description of Nader is bang on. Nader has spent her whole life striving, fighting, demanding better for Māori, and her contribution to our work has been no different. Shannon Parkuda, no one, and I mean it when I say it, no one in Aotearoa has more drive, passion and utter commitment to the social work profession than Shannon. She brought every bit of that drive and commitment to our mahi, and as the chair of our board, Shannon has also provided me with unwavering support and kept me on in, uh, in, in line when I needed it most. I think we would all agree that the work has been tough, but it has also been a privilege to have served. We were given the opportunity to look inside a system and to challenge it, to ask the hard questions, to sit down with Māori, social workers, communities, Oranga Tamariki, and those with lived experience and hear their stories, their concerns, and more often than not, their heartbreaking experiences. The privilege that comes from having that opportunity to take all of those stories and experiences and put forward recommendations on how we can save, uh, solve problems, address long-standing issues, and of course, this, uh, fix the system. When the minister asked us to take up this challenge to provide him with independent advice on the state of Oranga Tamariki, I think it is fair to say we were all apprehensive. We all had our own experiences with Oranga Tamariki. Some of us have been vocal critics of its people and processes, so stepping inside the tent was always going to be a big call. But we knew if we were true to the kaupapa, if we really wanted to see the system change, we needed to get involved, and so we did. The minister asked us to provide assurance and advice to him on three key areas. Relationships with families, whānau, hapu, iwi, and Māori, professional social work practices, and of course, organisational culture. 
After holding more than 70 hui with service providers, hapu, iwi, communities, heads of government agencies and statutory organisations, after visiting over 20 Waranga Tamariki site offices and speaking to more than 750 staff, including social workers, considering a large number of documents and reports going back well before the establishment of Waranga Tamariki and reviewing the current organisation's strategies, plans, financial statements, workforce, operations and human resources. Minister, we, your independent advisors, are unable to stand here today and provide a high level of assurance to you. However, what we can offer is a pathway forward for Oranga Tamariki, recommendations for change. Our hope is that with these changes underway, we will be able to provide you with higher levels of assurance before our, team, our term expires. Minister, together and alongside the leadership of Oranga Tamariki, we need to be relentless in our demand for change. In our report, we make three overarching recommendations. These are, number one, in order to lead prevention of harm to Tamariki and the Afano, collective Māori and community responsibility and authority must be strengthened and restored. The Crown's role is to support this kaupapa. There is currently no coordinated strategy for how Oranga Tamariki partners with Māori and communities to enable the shift to prevention. A strategy to address this is urgently required. Over the coming three months, we recommend that Oranga Tamariki undertakes a programme of engagement with Māori collectors and communities to understand what their ideas for the change they want to lead are and what resourcing and support they need to achieve it. We offer our support for this process. Under this overarching first recommendation, we stress that A, adequate resources and authority must be shared equitably with Māori. B, many of the services and support for Tamariki and the Afano currently delivered by Wuranga Tamariki can, over time, be provided by Māori and community groups. And C, the primary role for Oranga Tamariki social workers can then be to respond to emergency situations and navigate Tamariki and Fano to immediate help in order to secure their safety and protection. Moreover, the evidence is clear that the needs of Tamariki, Māori and Fano are not well served by the current system. Coming into contact with the current care and protection system, if only briefly, can reinforce and cause further damage to already vulnerable and hurt Tamariki and their Fano. The primary solution is to prevent the need for so many Tamariki and Fano to come to state attention, and for those that do, that the time they are engaged with the system is as short as possible, while their Fano are supported to heal so that they can safely take back the care of their Tamariki. Investment must be geared towards that prevention focus and to the system recalibration needed to enable it. We believe Oranga Tamariki needs ongoing help and guidance to support its shift to providing the most effective state care and protection system possible, but are firmly of the view that Oranga Tamariki is not the ultimate point. The ultimate point must be to prevent harm from occurring in the first place. We think it is obvious that Māori collectives and communities are best placed to lead this work. Our second recommendation, overarching recommendation that is, is to, in order to work collaboratively with Māori, community organisations and other government agencies, the purpose of Oranga Tamariki must be clarified. This includes clarifying who Oranga Tamariki primarily exists to serve, what areas of service delivery and support are for Māori and community to lead, and where the responsibility of other government agencies must be to support improved outcomes for Tamariki and Fano. Under this overarching recommendation, we include some specific recommendations targeted at reinforcing the social work focus for Oranga Tamariki. A, that the Office of the Chief Social Worker should be restored as a central role within Oranga Tamariki with, an, with enhanced influence across the agency. This is needed to address the deprofessionalisation of Oranga Tamariki's workforce away from social work and B, that induction, training, continuing professional development and supervision, including training and support for supervisors and practice leaders, must be prioritised. And C, that a workforce development plan that rebuilds the mana and professionalisation of Oranga Tamariki social workers and grows the broader supporting social sector workforce inside and critically outside Oranga Tamariki be developed as a priority. Indeed, that national office and regional sites should be better aligned in purpose and operational activities. 
we make these recommendations that it is clear to us that Oranga Tamariki social workers are under significant pressure. This is compounded by a lack of strong professional leadership and development, absence of consistent and timely induction across the organisation and weak professional structures and systems. The social work voice within Oranga Tamariki needs strengthening as professional practice views, opinions and experiences are missing at many levels within the organisation, including at its leadership group. Oranga Tamariki lacks strategic direction and is not visionary. It is self-centred and constantly looks to itself for answers. Its current systems are weak, disconnected and unfit for the population of Tamariki it serves, and there is no strategy to partner with Māori and the community. It is an agency that is vulnerable to be blown off course by the headwinds it inevitably encounters over time. We also, however, want to acknowledge, though, that Oranga Tamariki's work is hard. Social workers are expected to manage ambiguity, uncertainty, and to make judgments that no other agency or profession is called upon to make, within a system that requires them to constantly reassess priorities. We observe also that Oranga Tamariki social workers are isolated and need other agencies to work with them more proactively in order to address, address the risk of harm to Tamariki and their whānau. To help relieve these pressures, we recommend that in addition to recentering itself around professional social work, a workforce development plan is needed. This should recognise the core role of Oranga Tamariki social workers and grow the broader supporting social work sector, workforce inside and outside Oranga Tamariki. This should be developed and progressed as a priority. Minister, our final recommendation, a national Oranga Tamariki Governance Board should be established to oversee the diversity and depth of changes needed to guide and support Oranga Tamariki through the challenges they will inevitably face over time. This is necessary so that investment is sustained and focused on achieving improved outcomes for Tamariki and their whānau, with wider benefits for communities and the nation. The Governance Board will have responsibility for guiding Oranga Tamariki to devolve authority and resources to Māori collectives and community groups. It should ensure they are supported to lead prevention and the other programs and services currently provided by Oranga Tamariki, that communities are best placed to provide for Tamariki and their whānau. Within this third overarching recommendation, it is necessary to clarify the responsibilities of the state system for Tamariki and their whānau, not just solely those of Oranga Tamariki. Therefore, we further recommend that the Oranga Tamariki Governance Board has the mandate, capacity and capability to ensure collective government accountability for improved outcomes for Tamariki, their whānau and the wider community. This will require a shared framework to be developed. The Child and Youth Wellbeing Strategy already offers the authorising environment to build this within, providing a platform to immediately begin to leverage systems change. Our recommendations are intended to complement and reinforce one another. In doing so, we want their impact to include strengthening the village that Tamariki need and strengthening Oranga Tamariki to be a trusted doorway to the support and services that can assist whānau while drawing together the broad range of relevant government support when that is needed. To achieve the scale of change required to ensure positive and sustained progress, there must be a collective commitment to navigating the path and staying the course. Oranga Tamariki remains necessary. Accordingly, transformation within Oranga Tamariki is equally necessary. Oranga Tamariki's core functions, its processes and its place in the sector require significant adjustment and alignment so that it is fit for purpose for the communities and the whānau it serves. Minister, we have hoped that this report can set a new direction for Oranga Tamariki. It is our start to finally get things right for our kids, the Tamariki that need us to do our job. We must continue to remember that if we don't change the system, if we don't change Oranga Tamariki, then we are failing our most vulnerable children. And we are, of course, the adults who created this mess. Those kids have done nothing wrong. They are just kids who want to be loved, who want to feel protected and safe, who deserve to be happy. They depend on us and we cannot let them down. One final thank you to our team of the Broad Secretariat and also to Sawita Gardner, who I'm sure is watching today. Thank you to my team. Thank you to all of you and also Sawita for your service in putting together this report. No day ra me mahi tahi tato mo te oranga o te katoa te ra kato kato. Thank you, Minister.
Tēnāko Matt, thank you very much. And as you can see, uh, the Ministerial Advisory Board didn't hold back on what they thought. Before I begin, though, I do want to acknowledge the Oranga Tamariki frontline workers, those who are out in our communities every day doing their best to support our most vulnerable children and their families. There is no doubt that the work has been difficult. Oranga Tamariki has been in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons, and it is the frontline staff that feel those difficulties, those pressures the most. But I want to start from the beginning. When the previous government established Oranga Tamariki, it envisaged, envisaged sorry, I can't get that word right, something new, a body that would care and protect, for our, uh, protect our most vulnerable children, an agency that would do better than its predecessors. But the various iterations of our care and protection agencies, be it SIPs or SIFs, were flawed, as was the idea that we could bundle together those various iterations give them a new name and expect different outcomes. We know Oranga Tamariki has not lived up to its name. Uplifts social workers under pressure, a lack of training, and just recently care and protection residences displaying unacceptable behaviour. I asked for this job, and I knew the challenges I would face, and those challenges are real. But I also knew that while difficult, this mahi was perhaps the most important I will ever do. From the outset, I set out my expectations for Oranga Tamariki. I was committed to fixing the child care and protection system and ensuring that Oranga Tamariki was the organisation that people trust and go to for help. I wanted to have a laser-like focus on the needs of our children. I expect Oranga Tamariki to be that an enabler that allows the regions to decide what is right for their particular area, to empower communities and Māori to help children and their families in a way that suits them and not just Wellington. This focus, this vision for Oranga Tamariki is not new, not to frontline workers, communities, children in care or to Māori, not even to politicians from political parties different to my own. Paula Bennett, a previous National Minister responsible for the care and protection of children, expressed the same desires for Oranga Tamariki in her Matangi Reya interview with Mikey Sherman earlier this year. She knew we needed to devolve, she believed in the same vision, and she said she spent a frustrating five years trying to get us there. While there's always been a change programme to try and turn Oranga Tamariki around, we have never gone far enough. Now it is our turn. At the beginning of this year, I put in place my independent uh, ministerial advisory board of Matthew, Dame Nader, Sir Mark Solomon and Shannon Parkura, and I tasked them with the job of looking into three main areas. Relationships with families in Māori, professional practice of social workers and organisational culture. What I needed from them was to start building a pathway forward, and I knew they wouldn't go easy on the system, after all, these were some of the voices who had been the most vocal uh, critics of Oranga Tamariki. But that was what we needed. We needed them to gather information, ask the hard questions, and outline a new direction for Oranga Tamariki, one that would keep our children safe. During their work, they took the time to listen to the concerns, the heartbreak, the total frustration from whānau, and social workers from entire communities. They had to hear the worst to build a vision of what better looked like and start to craft a pathway forward in how we would get there. Their report and the notes from their meetings across the country are confronting. The board did not hold back exactly what I asked of them. And they laid it on the line, the whole truth. So much so that I took their words with me to the cabinet table the cabinet paper that was written to put in place the changes we are announcing today was littered with the words, thoughts and opinions of the board and those they spoke to as well as being, oh, sorry, as well as being informed by the Waitangi Tribunal findings in its report here, Pā Harakeke. As the Minister of Children, I and every single one of my cabinet colleagues accept this report in its entirety. Like everyone here today, we all know we have to do something differently as the current approach is not working. 
As Matt has already outlined, in total, the Ministerial Advisory Board has made three overarching recommendations. Collective Māori and community authority and responsibility must be strengthened and resourced to lead pre prevention of harm to tamariki and their whānau. Secondly, the purpose of Oranga Tamariki must be clarified. This includes who Oranga Tamariki primarily exists to serve. And thirdly, a process to establish a national Oranga Tamariki Governance Board should be designed over the coming year with the Oranga Tamariki Governance Board to be in place by the end of 2022. You will see change. As well as, 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 well as the recommendations in the report, as the Minister, I have already taken further steps to make improve, improvements to Oranga Tamariki. Uh, alongside the Oranga Tamariki Chief Executive, we have announced that we will close our current residential care and protection homes and replace our residential care and protection homes with smaller purpose-built homes to enable care for high complex needs. Another area of particular concern for me is the way Oranga Tamariki uses Section 78 orders to uplift children. To uplift a child from their family should be the last resort in any situation. I think there needs to be more clarity provided in this area. So I want to set a clear direction to only use Section 78 without notice orders for children when there is clear evidence after solid engagement or attempts at engagement with whānau which leads to no workable safety plan being put in place. Our social workers can do this and I am focused on supporting them and the community to work together on this. I am not so naive though to think that we may never, uh, may not ever have to uplift a child from a dangerous situation. But if we do, if we have to, if we must, then I want to make sure that we do so in a respectful manner that we limit the trauma we cause families and babies, that we have done everything up to that point to keep the whānau and the baby safe together. Because once we use that power, once we take that action, the trauma cannot be undone. So I want us to use it only when it is absolutely necessary and not just because things get a bit tough. Like I mentioned in the beginning, yes, mistakes have been made. Yes, we need to change. The system is broken, but many people that work inside the system are not. They care for the children they protect and I truly value the work they do. Many go above and beyond what the system allows to support our children that need it the most. They believe, as I do, that our care and protection agency are the parents of children who can't be with their own parents. And we must be the best example of what good parents are. But we cannot do this alone. Families support one another and communities look out for each other. That is what this is about. As a whānau, we need to work together. Agencies, iwi, NGOs and the community looking after children as our own whānau. To care for children when no one else can is a privilege. A responsibility no one should take lightly. Not me as the minister, not this government, not the department. Everything we do, every action we take needs to be in the best interest of the child we have the privilege to care for. And the system needs to reflect, reflect that. The system needs to encourage it. This isn't small change. This is a fundamental rethink. It will require Oranga Tamariki staff to step up, to change the way they think and to do better, and they will be supported to do that. But I believe that together we can change the system. We can better care for, for and protect our children. And if we get it right at the end of this all, we will finally live up to the name that Dame Nader Glavish gifted us, that is Oranga Tamariki. To the board, um, Matt, Dame Nader, Sir Mark and Shannon, thank you. Thank you for all the work you have done and all you will do. I want you all to know how important your advice has been to me, how I appreciate the commitment you have shown to our tamariki, and I want to congratulate you on a brave and bold report that puts our children and their well-being at its very core. Together, we can make change. As a whānau, we are all here for the same thing, to protect our children. And finally, I would like to acknowledge Sir Witter Gardner's leadership while he was the Acting Chief Executive, 
and I wish him the best with the challenge he faces now. So myself and Matt are now happy to take any questions you may have. Can you promise that fewer Māori children will be taken by the state? Uh, what I can promise is that communities and Oranga Tamariki will work, will work together in uh, an equitable treaty partnership to reduce the numbers of children that are taken into care. Uh, if we work together, as I said in the speech, we will achieve our, our goal. Ultimately, we want no children at all to be in state care, but if it does have to happen, then we'll make sure that communities and Oranga Tamariki uh, are working together in the best interests of that child. And the factors of uplift themselves, obviously you don't want them happening, obviously they're in a last resort, but the traumatic nature of the, the, the practice of uplift, are there going to be any changes made to that actual procedure? Yeah, so at the moment Oranga Tamariki is acting as the agent, agency of we know best. And what I'm saying now is that any um, uplifts will be at the, um, after everything else has been expended, after communities and Oranga Tamariki have uh, explored all alternative options to keep that child safe, and ultimately, if it, that can't, can't be done, then there will need to be an uplift, but it needs to be done in a way that minimises the trauma, and it has to be done with respect. What on Tamariki's internal review in 2019 kind of recommended something similar and recommended that the way that uplifts and the removal of, child, of children was changed and obviously nothing happened, still happening. How can you guarantee that the change is actually going to happen here? Uh, look, to be honest, <coughs> um, I'm going to be a bit of a bulldozer and behind me I've got uh, Dame Nader Glavish, the warship, and I, you know, we just have to actually force these changes through. You know, it's the, the time for talk and the time for reviews and everything has ended and it's now time to make these uh, changes happen. And the board has given us a great pathway forward. And how, how exact, can you explain, I guess, how exactly you're going to ensure that the change to uplifts is going to happen? Will you be you know, reported to regularly about it? Or how yeah, sure it I've, I've already told my officials that we will be, uh, because we meet weekly, and at our regular meetings, I will be asking on progress um, on all the uh, recommendations in the, in the report. But there are certain things like the uplifts that, you know, I want to know how it has been done uh, and that if it has been done, that they have followed the sort of the process that I've described. Respectfully, have they exhausted all the other options? <laughs> Authority. <laughs> Tō mātou hiehie ki a whai tētahi rangatahi me tētahi o te uh, hāpuri uh, haua ki a whakapakari ai i te rau ngā puari. Ko tēnei puari, he Māori katoa. Uh, mā rātou e, e tiruhia i ngā mahi e, e wepu hoki te wepu. Engari, uh, ka pēhea tō arotake i ēnei panonitanga ki a mōhi o pū ai koe, uh, Will you be taking a hard-headed approach? You talk about being a bulldozer. Will you be doing that um, in order to realise the recommendations? And te tahi whakautu i rotoi te reo Māori koa. Yeah, ko tāku tino hia, uh, ko rongo koe, ka wepu ngia i te wepu. Uh, Horekau hau i te hia hia, uh, kia haere tonu, kia haere noa, uh, oranga tamariki. Kei te mohi o rātou, uh, ko tai te wā, me huri te tai, me hakapakari, uh, o rātou mahi, uh, me mahi tahi i ngā hāpuri, uh, kia, kia tino whakahaumaru ai i ngā tai tamariki. Do you see 
that you wanted this job, you knew it was a broken system. Are these the changes that will make you proud in order to see real difference? This is this systemic change. You know, this is a true treaty partnership, an equitable treaty partnership. Oranga Tamariki, like I said before, was the uh, We Know Best agency. Now they're the enabler to uh, make sure that Māori and community uh, aspiration is realised. They have to pull the, the levers, we will pull the levers of government to uh, achieve the aspirations of communities. And why is it so crucial to have iwi and hapu at the centre of all of this? <laughs> For, for too long, uh, the Crown has um, laid the claim that they're the best parents and that they know what's best for children. And I'm saying no more. We know that Māori and communities have the answers. And when we work together, we'll be able to achieve positive outcomes for our children. There's obviously been an, Sorry, un there's obviously been an unconscious bias and racism in the system. Does Oranga Tamariki need to front up and acknowledge that Māori whānau love their children as much as everyone else? Yeah, as I said, mistakes have been made. And also uh, a mantra that I say regularly around the table to my uh, officials is that uh, fess up and fix things. You know, we've, there's no more excuses, no more um, justification for why things have happened. If it's wrong, just fess up and let's just fix it. Section 78 uh, applications, why leave them as an option on the table when there are other sections of the Act that can be used to keep Tamariki safe without that um, open-ended time frame that Section 78 allows for? Yeah, uh, we don't want to see them used, but what we're saying is if all other avenues have been expended, if there are if the community and Oranga Tamariki together have tried their best engaging with Fano, and it is deemed that it, the child is still unsafe and it is in the best interest of the child, that there has to be something to fall back on. But again, the Section 78 can still, you know, an uplift can still mean that the child is placed with um, loving, caring people. You know, loving. It's not as if we're ripping them away and then and then the Fano never see them again. Oh, well, kuya, taku, um, kia jena, I and I. Mehemeaku, poukato, nga mahi, hey, hey, ata homaru ite tamaiti, ate mutunga, uh, mehemea kafakai, kafakai, te hapuri, me oranga tamariki, kia. Kia tango te tamaiti, kia tino whaka haumaru ai taunga tamaiti e pai ana. Engari, horekau ko tēnā te, te mea tuatahi, ko ia te mutunga. Ha ha te mea nui kia whauahi hoki a ngā whānau, ngā hapu me ngā iwi ki tēnei kaupapa? Ah, me, me pēhea ngā, ngā whānau tō pātai. Ha ha te mea nui kia whauahi rātou ki tēnei kaupapa, ngā iwi me ngā hapu? Ah, e taia ana ngā whānau, ngā hapu, ngā iwi, ki a whai ngā huarahi hei tiaki e ngā tai tamariki. Me ngā whānau, mehemea kei kona he tamaiti, kei te raru raru, kei kona hoki tona whānau, kei te raru raru. Nā reira, e, e mea tika, he mea Māori ki a awhinatia tātou i a tātou anō. You said, said that you said that you'd be a, a bulldozer and that this would be sort of systemic change. What does this personally mean to you? Uh, making these changes, well this is the reason I got into politics, to make a difference for Māori. And across all my portfolios there is a theme, be it corrections, be it Oranga Tamariki, be it Māori education, be it Māori Crown relations. And uh, this is what you do as a Māori politician, you get into politics to make a difference and to change the system. And people often say, well you, you just can't change the system and I, I just beg to, to differ on that uh, point. And, um, you know, for 180 something odd years now, Māori have been at the wrong end of, of everything. It's time to change things. And what was it like for you reading that report when it came back? Well, it wasn't a surprise. Um, and it confirmed my, I guess, my, my prejudices. Uh, and uh, I just went, this is great because now we know what we have to do to fix things. Oh, sorry, down here. Um, could it sit long and call for a bi Māori, for Māori approach? 
uh, including a Matthew 2 kaki. Um, do you think, think that this achieves that? I mean, would you describe this transformation as by Māori for Māori? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, this is about Māori and communities coming up with the solutions alongside Oranga Tamariki in a partnership. Um, and so Māori will have to say, and it's about enabling um, those aspirations of communities and of Māori to, to come to fruition. You know, they've, they've been calling for it for, uh, for years and years, uh, way too many years to, to uh, count. And, um, you know, attempts have been tried, but now it's time to actually, you know, for the rubber to hit the road. Sam. Related, related, to, sorry, related to Michael's question, possibly a question for Matt, D did the board give any consideration to the Waitangi Tribunal's recommendation of a, a, a new Māori authority? You know, you, you've self-centred, weak, directionless, you don't seem to have a lot of confidence in a Ranga Tamariki. Can it actually be reformed and made fit for purpose, or do you need a new organisation? Yeah, th hey, thanks for the question. A um, couple of things. Number one, we not only took into account the Waitangi Tribunal report and recommendations, but you all will know in that room that this has been a, a reported on agency well before it was even called Oranga Tamariki, going back decades and decades. So we've taken into account not only the Waitangi Tribunal report and recommendations, um, the former expert advisory panel, for example, Port Te Atatū, the Rangiho report, and so on. Tamir, tamir, tamir. So we've done a, an extensive bit of work. It does take into account all of those recommendations and aspirations too. Um, and one of the big fundamental shifts um, uh, that, that is being made here is that the Ministerial Advisory Board is not going away. Uh, we are going to be monitoring the implementation of these recommendations as you would expect. And in many ways, when reports like this drop, uh, very rarely do you have that what next moment other than relying on the, the leadership of, um, of the Minister, in this case, Kelvin Davis. Uh, and he's already indicated to you um, his leadership style, and, and, and I don't talk all that. Um, the, the other thing, too, uh, which is really important, is to understand what we're trying to do here, which is recentre um, this to be focused on whānau. Um, whānau need to sit at the centre of everything we do, which is why that word prevention was peppered so very um, clearly, not only throughout the report, but in the words that I've just spoken as well. Uh, so, for example, we know that um, there might be 5,400-odd tamariki in care right now, um, but actually uh, the number of notifications that come into the system, uh, more than 70,000 per annum in the period that we had a look at, um, you know, they come from all aspects of, of, of life. Um, we get notifications from the community, from police, from corrections, from education and schools and tamir tamir. Our hope and our aspiration is actually to prevent children and whānau coming into the system because we and other agencies and other um, programs of work like, work like the, the Māori Health Authority, for example, are working up here at the top end. So when you get down to, well, is a new authority needed? Is a new organisation needed? No, because that will also take time to step up. What we're saying is let's get on with that work now, but also um, let's not um, underestimate the, um, the ability to put in new forms of governance, which is one of the recommendations that we made. So what were your thoughts on that, though? Would you have wanted to see a full scrap of Oranga Tamariki? No, I think there's always going to be a place for Oranga Tamariki. Um, but the focus does, and Matt raised the very good point that I should have really expanded on uh, earlier a lot more, is that it, right now, Oranga Tamariki is about re reacting to something that happens. And we've got to move from that reaction, reactionary um, frame to a prevention frame. If we can prevent a child and prevent a whanau for, from actually having harm uh, caused, that is a better outcome than just trying to fix something that's already happened. Scrap for an atamariki altogether, though, because you've used words like needing to be a bulldozer. Doesn't that suggest that you should have scrapped it? No, uh, bulldoze the uh, the the action plan forward. You know, it's got to we've got to make things uh, happen. Uh, in terms of oranga tamariki, like I say, there's always a role. There's always got to be that statutory role that will remain. But their their job is to become enablers. Regionally, um, regional decisions centrally enabled is what we've been talking about. How do you future-proof these changes? These are quite significant. Do you see that um, an amendment to the legislation? Um, uh, if, the yeah, if there needs to be legislative changes, there will be. But I think you know, once uh, we start down this road, I don't think communities will will let it up. I don't think they'll say, "Oh, well, you know, it's going to go back to Oranga Tamariki making all the decisions for our children." Can I go back to that 
racism and un unconscious bias within the system, a lot of Māori have felt targeted by yep. Oranga Tamariki. Will there be a direction um, in, in viewing Māori families as not, so not dysfunctional? <laughs> Does there need to be a mindset change within the organisation? Yeah, and there already has been, uh, you know, those discussions. We have to, you know, Māori are totally capable of being caring, loving uh, whānau. Um, and, you know, we've got to work from that positive um, platform rather than a deficit model. Oh, and and, and just an acknowledgement of the trauma, I mean, I mean, reading this report, there is obviously, obviously been a massive amount of trauma caused by Oranga Tamariki. Does the Crown need to apologise to Māori for that? Look, that's something that, um, that we can explore. Um, what we need to do right now is get into the job of imp implementing the action plan and the way forward. Um, the best thing that we can do is to make sure that no more trauma uh, occurs. In terms of um, the numbers, by the end of March 2021, there were a total of 5,400 tamariki in the care of Oranga Tamariki. Do you expect to see fewer tamariki in Oranga Tamariki due to these changes? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the goal. You know, ultimately, the goal is zero um, children um, of any ethnicity in state care. Um, that'll take some time to get to. Um, but the, the thing is, is we've just got to focus on that, on that goal. You know, we've got to focus on making sure every child in New Zealand is in a safe, loving family. Uh, la last question. How Sam? have social workers failed so badly? You both talked about how important frontline workers are and the hard work they do, but the report says, you know, in, from 2017, the amount of professional development they got dropped off at the exact time you were implementing a new the government, the Crown was implementing a new ministry. And, and wanting changes. How, how could that have ever happened, that they were failed at a time when you wanted them to step up? Yeah, um, look, I really do take my hat off for, for, for the social workers. Um, that's why there's a big emphasis on the report and supporting them. One of the big issues uh, that, that was noted was uh, they previously Oranga Tamariki talked about caseload. Well, caseload isn't actually a good measure workload is. You might have one case, but the work may be so complex and, you know, the, there's so much going on that the workload from that one case is more than someone over here with 10 cases. Um, also, uh, social workers, they go out and their job is to make sure the children are safe. But when they get to a family, there's probably, um, well, obviously violence, drug and alcohol issues, probably housing issues, probably lack of food, probably educational issues, a whole heap of things. And social workers take on board all those other um, issues as well when their role is to keep that child safe. And that's why we need to actually work, and that's why we talk about clarifying the role of, um, of the social workers, to make sure that we work with other agencies to make sure everybody is doing their job and social workers can focus on keeping children safe. So, Just in terms of that safety question, because you know, there's a lot of changes here. How will you ensure children are still being kept safe with these changes? Well, working with um, communities and Oranga Tamariki in those communities. Because, the, because by divesting power to different regions and communities, how will you ensure that there's a consistency of care? Okay, so so the just the last um, question, because I do have to go. If we take the example up in Kaitaia itself, where every day uh, all the agencies come together and they triage the reports of concern and then they do them so they it's basically through the community cooperating working together they can follow the progress now there's been exceptional results and reductions in you know in in cases and reductions in children going to uh, into care and it's you know there's these pockets of excellence around the country we need to make sure that the, those pockets of excellence become the norm thank you everyone thank you very much